um, and drop it by another five degrees. So, you know, the, the following week it's 85 degrees, the following week it's at 80, and then down to 75. So by the time they're fully feathered or around four to six weeks old, depending on the type of bird and depending what time of year it is, what sort of environment they're in, that's when they're okay to go outside and, and kind of convert. For myself, we started ours out in the house. Now, I've done this numerous times. I really don't recommend it. Chickens are dusty. There's the need shavings. They flap their wings all day long. It, it gets to be quite chaotic. But for some people, like for ourselves, we didn't have a garage. We didn't have anywhere that we could put them that we felt um, was draft free or safe for them. So in the living room, they went in a giant dog crate. Um, this coming season, we are finally at the point where we don't have to do that. Uh, thank goodness. Um, but we've many times started our birds, whether they be egg layers or meat birds or turkeys in the house. Um, so when you have, so let's say you bring your 20 chicks home and you have them in a dog crate, whether it be in your garage or house, whatever the case may be, you've got the heat lamp. So you're going to need shavings or some sort of bedding. I do recommend shavings. They're easy to clean up. Uh, the feeders and waterers. So when you start baby chicks, I typically use something like this, depending on how many you have. If you brought, if you got 20, one of these will do. You have to fill it up. I always recommend whether they're vaccinated or not, to give them poultry vitamins. We sell these here at Buckerfields, really inexpensive, and this will last a long time. Uh, you just put a little sprinkle in, I don't follow the measurements, just until it turns pale yellow in the container. It gives them a boost, especially for the first three days. Uh, very important, and I always have it on hand, so if, if my chickens don't seem to be doing well even now, I'll go give them a boost in their water outside in their, in their coop. For feeders, when they're chicks, I tend to use this, very low to the ground. You just pour your feed in here and snap the lid closed and they can go on either side and, and feed that way. Um, are there people here who have never raised chickens at all? Okay, good. Okay. Have you ever used open feed bags before? Okay. There's a trick to opening a feed bag, you know what I mean, I'll probably do it wrong. Um, there's a tab at the top, and I'm just going to show you. These are two starter bags that we have here at the store. You pull the tab, and then it just peels along the top. So this is the Bufferfields brand, and this is a starter grower. And if you can see, it's just sort of a crumble, so it's small enough for baby chicks to eat. The organic one is a little bit different. Uh, it's more so a powder. and. It's ground very finely, and you can see little bits of, of their, so I don't know if you guys can see, little bits of organic corn and, and grain in there. That's what I use for mine. <coughs> can you mix the two? <coughs> you could. Yeah. Um, I don't, me personally, it's, it's really the same thing, just one is not organic and one is organic, so you don't need to. The... I should have brought a heat lamp. I didn't bring a heat lamp with me. Um, so basically, yes. So did you start right off the bat with organic, or did you notice the difference causing I did switch? start right off the bat oh, okay. with organic, but um, from experience here at the store, because we do bring in chicks here um, in April and May, we always just use, um, a, we, we choose Chatterbox, which I've left pamphlets up here if you guys want, which is the non-GMO line that we do carry here. Uh, the reason I do this is just in case somebody is going to be feeding organic or they're going to be feeding non-GMO, the chickens are already started on that, Whether and if they choose to go with the just our standard Buckerfields brand, there's nothing wrong with the Buckerfields brand. What the, it's just not guaranteed to be non-GMO. Um, chicks are really simple because that's all they need. Heat, food, water, and no draft. Does anybody have any questions yet? Yeah. Okay. Um, the big, giant metal watering troughs. Yes. Can we use that to? Absolutely. Like the stock tanks. Yes. Yes. So out front when you came in, we have a whole stretch of stock tanks out there. A lot of people, um, I would recommend getting one that's a bit taller, like maybe mid, just at least above your knee. 
Um, it's a great way to raise chicks because nothing can get in there if you have a cat or whatever the case may be. And just what I would recommend is just put a mesh or something over top so nothing can, can get inside. And it actually could be really convenient to hang a light over top of that. Mm -hmm. um, you always want to put your heat lamp to one side mm -hmm. and that way the birds that are, are cold will you know, congregate under the heat and if they're too hot they'll go to the other side. And don't, don't leave your food and water on the heated side, put it on the other side or sort of in the middle. Um, so yeah, so when you're starting chicks, that's the case. And then like I said at the beginning, you're gonna change your, your heat setup every, every week to reduce the heat by five degrees. Any other questions? Yeah. How do you raise the heat lamp up when you use your pole? Or? For me, I had actually, my husband had sort of made something that actually, it, it was similar to a pole that would come up and then the light was hanging on it. And we would just, yeah, sometimes we'd it. used a chain before that yeah. we were able to, you know, change, change what notch it was on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so after, after about, Depending on the type of bird, there's different types of chicks too. I, I could, we could go on for hours and hours if we discussed all the different breeds of chickens. So I did find, it's a couple year old uh, Rochester hatchery catalog that we have in the office here. The new ones should be mailed out next week. So all of the birds that you're able to choose, if you choose to purchase them through Buckerfield this year, we'll have catalogs coming up. Um, but you could flip through this if you're interested to see all the different types of birds. Uh, when choosing, uh, your chicks uh, a lot of people that are starting off want to do this for egg laying purposes so you're going to want to be you're, you might not necessarily get all those fancy blue and green eggs that everybody sees and, and wants because it's very hard to sex those heritage birds so it's not it, it's it's a lot easier to purchase something like a dual purpose bird, which would be like a Colombian rock, a barred rock, a red rock cross, a uh, Rhode Island red. They are sexable and they're, it's about a 90% accuracy. One year I bought, um, the second year I did chickens, I added 20 more to our flock of eight and I bought them from downstairs here at Buckerfield. So they're day old chicks and there were all supposed to be female and I got one rooster out of it. So the odds are pretty good that they sex them quite well. So that is really what I recommend because there are so many unwanted roosters and people don't know what to do with roosters. Uh, within certain areas, you're not even allowed to have a rooster. Um, so it, it's kind of the way to go unless you're willing to have a lot of roosters on your property because I'm um, let's face it it could be half and half um, what are the names can you say those four names again sure so um, it's barred rock yeah. uh, Colombian rock mm -hmm. red rock cross Rhode Island reds and what's the other one red Sussex red Sussex cross thank you there are other birds this past year that I got as chicks that I really recommend. Super winter hardy and super friendly. Leghorns and sex sellings. These are a hybrid layer. They do really well um, over the winter. We have great egg production. I mean, this past year, because I bought them in April, they didn't do what um, in the chicken world they call molting, which we can get into a bit later. Uh, so I've had consistent egg production all winter, so I've been selling a lot more eggs than I normally do um, Because usually the chickens molt in the winter So basically what molting means I might as well address this now is the chickens take a break from laying There's less daylight hours. They lose a bit of feathers. They look a little worse for wear and sometimes it could be Three to four weeks. I've had some of my chickens molt for up to eight weeks even longer some of the heritage breeds so it's, it's like they're like nope I'm, I'm just going to call it quits for this time of year and then you're out of eggs and I've actually had people that raise chickens come and buy eggs for me because they just don't have any eggs right now so it's uh there's a benefit to buying chicks in the spring <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that second one? There's leghorn and what was the other one? Oh, uh, sexaling. So it's S-E-X-S-A-L. Like, yes. And they're, they're a brown egg layer. The uh, leghorns are a white egg layer. They're funny looking little things. They're really skinny compared to other chickens, but they are disease resistant, super hardy in the winter, and great egg layers. They lay a white egg. 
Um, so after you've gone through and the chickens are able to go outside, it's time to put them in whatever coop it is that you've chosen. Um, you have so many options depending on what your property is like, your backyard is like. Uh, are you going to let them free range? Are you going to give them a big huge run? Uh, what, your, what are your plans going to be? When we first started, we opted to do a big run from their shed converted to a chicken coop. Um, we put fencing. I was so paranoid of hawks and eagles and all of that kind of stuff. I made vents string wire along <laughs> the top and put mesh up and uh, just pure chaos. It was ridiculous. And now my chickens, we just open the gate and out they go every day. So <laughs> it, it is what it is. You learn as you go. Uh, nobody is an expert when it comes to chickens, that's for sure. Um, so once the first year, that's how we did it. And that is good, but they eat the ground really quickly if you keep them to a confined space. Mm -hmm. And then what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna have to supplement them. They get bored really easily. Mm -hmm. A great one to supplement them with in winter. And Anita, you brought up hot pepper. Yeah. So Sorry. a really good Sorry. thing to feed your chickens in winter as a treat is suet that we sell in the, you know, in birdseed. A lot of people oh. hang this out for woodpeckers. Hot pepper blood. Correct. Oh. So <laughs> this is not a picture of That's my so chicken, funny. but I have done this in both coops. So we just grab a suet feeder. They're like five bucks and a block of suet, which is like two bucks. Stick it in the feeder. They peck at it. They love it. It's high protein. And, uh, and you know, with the chickens don't don't taste heat. So you can give them cayenne and it's really good um, boost for them. Yeah. yeah. So if they are confined, we also sell another product called Happy Chicken and the chickens, I will tell you, go absolutely nuts for it. I used to just give black oil sunflower seeds, which is another great one, um, but they love mealworms. Dried mealworms are mixed in this Happy Chicken mix and they just go absolutely insane. But anything you have, garden scraps, Throw, you know, when you're when you're cleaning out your garden at the end of the summer, put your your kale, your lettuce, all of that stuff, or let them in your garden. Yeah. That's another really good thing. Are you um, cleaning out your freezer too, Tony? Is there? Oh, I, oh, I, oh I, yeah. I, I they they eat meat. meat. Yeah. Absolutely, they, they love eat meat. meat. Yeah, they do. Yes. Love it. Yeah, and if if you ever have mice, stick them in the chicken coop. They'll yeah. get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we sort of touched on the heat, the housing, the food, the water, okay. Um, I'm going to kind of go into a little bit about raising meat birds because the beginning part is still all the same. If you're going to raise meat birds, there's usually one of two choices. You can go with more of a heritage breed, which is a western rustic, is what they have here. It's a, it's a brown, pretty sort of feathered bird. Um, I have eaten them before. I don't find them as good as a broiler, which is your standard white meat bird chicken. If you watch any YouTube, if you watch any homesteading on YouTube, a lot of these American homesteaders are raising what they call Cornish Cross. This is what it is. It's a white meat bird. Um, they, the reason that we chose to do the Cornish Cross or the broilers as they're referred to here, is because you get more meat and it's quicker. The Western Rustics, which are the heritage, a bit darker meat, they don't develop a breast like you're used to seeing at the grocery store. So when you're buying your chicken breast at the grocery store, those are Cornish Crosses. Uh, the Western Rustic will be a little bit thinner and they, they need at least nine weeks. Whereas the broilers, if they're female, which I do recommend if you are purchasing broilers to purchase females because they will be ready within six to eight weeks to butcher and you will get the breast meat. Whereas if they are, you can yeah. choose unsexed, which is a bit cheaper, but what that male bird, the rooster will do is they'll put their energy into growing height, not the meat. Mm -hmm. So this is why I opt to actually purchase female broilers mm -hmm. um, because they are sexed too. Um, it's just, it's a guarantee that I'm gonna have more plump, juicy chickens. Do you sell the broilers here? Yes, we do. Okay. So yes. not not loose like we do the egg layers downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, it's a minimum order of 25 birds. Mm -hmm. And um, some people, if they don't want 25, they, they find a neighbor or a friend that they can split the, split the batch with. 
and that way, yeah, everybody sort of gets what they want. Um, it, the hatchery that we do order from here at Barker Fields is, 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 does have that minimum set. I have been asked before to do broilers, like to sell them here in the store, but I don't know that we would have enough people coming to buy them, like just ones or twos or fives or tens, right. to because quite honestly, it makes me very uncomfortable. I have been here for eight and a half years and we experienced a fire at the store and I have to keep them heated overnight. So I get very, very concerned when I have to leave birds here overnight, even though they're in a confined area. So I pull out all the gadgets and gizmos. I've got heat plates because I refuse to have a heat lamp on in the store. So that's another sort of worry for me with actually selling broilers here at the store loose. Um, yeah. So with the meat birds, so I did mention at the beginning, I did raise my meat birds inside the house in the dog crate until they were old enough to go outside. And it doesn't have to be fancy for a meat bird. You want, I try to time my meat birds to go outside when the weather has actually warmed up. So when we're deep into May and it's nice and sunny, they need somewhere safe to go at night that is enclosed, that you can actually close the door. Believe it or not, last year it was ridiculous, but we used an old truck canopy that we found on our property. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend it unless you put it up on cinder blocks because I did a lot of crawling around on the ground to get in. Um, you know, use what you have. Um, so with that, there's a ton of options. So we sort of built a big area in our front yard because we don't like to move along. So we have this big area of lawn. So my husband made a complete fence around it and um, and the canopy was in there, so they were able to eat the grass and the bugs and all that kind of good stuff, and plus they would be fed. Now when feeding broilers, this is the difference between egg layers and meat birds. You need to feed them a lot of feed, because they're only around for eight weeks. Um, I use long metal troughs along the ground. I don't have one right here. I should have brought one. It's sort of the same width as this, and the, but it's like, you know, four feet long and it's got little legs. So we fill that up twice a day. Um, I recommend leaving it outside. When you bring your meat birds in at night, just put them into bed because chickens can't see in the dark. So if, if they're if they're inside, they're going to sleep, and then when they go outside, they can they can eat and whatnot in the morning. Um, I have one of um, a friend of mine that actually used to work here. She has been calling me, and she's got she sent me pictures because her meat birds didn't do so well this year. But she was free feeding them, so they had food access 24/7. So they will overeat. That's what they want to do. They want to eat. So her meat had a lot of fat on it, and and you don't want to get to that point. The other thing is meat birds, specifically broilers, are very susceptible to heart attacks. So you want to make sure that they have the proper amount of food um, in a day. If you find, and sometimes you just sort of have to play with the amount of food that you're feeding them. Because there's, no, there's nothing written anywhere that says this is what you feed and this is what you get. So just sort of Play it by ear, keep going, fill the trough. If, it, if they look like they're really scrounging for food, give them more food, but just I would not recommend having food available 24-7. Okay, question time. Yes. We don't have meat birds yet, but we're getting them this mm -hmm. year, so I have a few questions. Yes. Why fence them in? Why not a tractor? Why not a chicken Absolutely, tractor? I was going to bring that up too. Okay. Chicken tractor is another great idea. There are a ton of of videos online how to build a, tra a chicken tractor really inexpensive so basically for those of you that don't have a clue what i'm talking about a chicken tractor is something that you can actually pull across your property and they will be inside this contained area and they're able to eat the the grass they're not staying on the same spot of of ground every day um yeah if that's the case how much space would they require depends on how many birds you have so I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. How many birds you have and, and how much of an area you have to use. So I think you want to know a really good YouTube page to look for anything to do with meat birds is Sow the Land. Oh, yes. yes. So he raises meat birds every, it's S-O-W, the land. Um, they raise a ton of meat birds there in South Carolina, I think. 
Anyhow, they raise a ton of meepers and actually do workshops on their property where they even butcher their own chicken. So you can even learn how to butcher a chicken. He has classes online, a whole bunch of stuff. So um, I would definitely, they also have plans, I believe plans for chicken tractors on their site. Check them out on YouTube and then and you'll see. Um, Sorry, question, yes. why, why did you guys fence yours and not do a tractor? Why? Laziness. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, this time of year, I am here literally for 70 hours a week, so it's just my husband and I expect him to, to do <laughs> to the pigs, the chickens, the turkeys, yeah. the regular egg layers, the dogs. Okay. So, yeah, it, it was just a lot simpler for us, but this year that we're moving into, he did build a chicken tractor last year, Yeah. like into the season that we actually housed our egg layers before we could put them in with the big birds. Okay. Um, so, we do have one now and he's going to start building some more. So in the chicken tractor, do you have a place for them to go and sleep at night? Yeah, we built a roost in it. Oh, you did? Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he just got another, you know, tree branch or you can use a tree branch, a two by four. Some people say it needs to be a flat surface. Mm -hmm. So we've always used tree branches, so they're round and it works just fine. Yeah. So meat birds and laying birds can't coexist? Sure they can. If you're getting them as chicks together, they can. I would just be concerned maybe that my egg layers might be eating too much. But um, right but now. other than that, it's fine. Now, when you're if you're going to also do turkeys, I highly recommend getting them at the same time you get your meat birds. Because turkeys are stupid. <laughs> they cannot, they, they're the cutest things ever, but they cannot figure out how to use the water or how to, how, how to eat. Like the, the baby chicks literally teach them how. Yeah. Another thing I should mention, whether you get egg laying chicks or turkeys or meat bird chicks, when you bring them home, dip their beak in the water so they know that's the water. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so any of you that are going to do turkeys, highly recommend doing it with meat birds because the turkeys will eventually pick on those meat birds, peck them, all sorts of things, but your meat birds will be gone by the time they reach maturity, so you don't have anything to worry about. And meat birds, chicken meat birds, can be fed because turkeys need a higher protein. They can be fed turkey starter, turkey grower. It's okay to feed them the higher protein if they're broilers. And you keep your separate though. You keep your egg layers separate. Egg layers birds. and meat birds totally separate. separate? Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so housing chicken tractors. The other thing you can do if you want them to, if you just have something like we use, like I said, like a truck canopy. If you have a stationary house for your meat birds and you want them to be able to free range, but you don't have the means of putting up a fence, you could put up electric netting, um, and it's movable really handy um, it's I mean it's pricey it's about three hundred dollars a roll it's 165 feet long you would need an energizer a ground rod and then you have electric fencing but it'll last you forever um, same thing I, I think I mentioned I give my meat birds and my turkey poults the poultry vitamin two in their water Anybody else have any questions about housing or feeding? With the electric fence, yes. if, were, if that's an option, yes, you would have to build them a building to be able to go to bed at night, yeah? Or somewhere where you can close them in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, whether it's a proper yeah. building or something just that you found somewhere. on the property that you could use. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's long, well, Another thing I should point out, so earlier when I was talking about when you asked me about what the breeds were for dual purpose, I should be a little bit clearer what the meaning behind dual purpose is because a lot of people make the assumption, because we sell dual purpose downstairs, that they can just be meat birds. That is not what dual purpose means. What dual purpose means is by the time that chicken is done laying their eggs two, three years down the road, they would make really good soup stock or you know stewing yes. chicken not not okay it's six months old I'm gonna butcher it now you're gonna get hardly any meat yes. it's not worth it um, so dual purpose is meant to use them for a couple of years for eggs 
pan and into the soup pot they go. <clears throat> A lot of questions come up here about whether or not to vaccinate or not vaccinate your birds. That is your own choice. I, I do not vaccinate my birds. Um, it is also recommended by the hatchery that if you don't vaccinate it, you should be feeding medicated feed. And if you do vaccinate, you should be, you should be feeding unmedicated feed. In my opinion, that too is a personal preference. I do not do either. I do not vaccinate and I do not feed the medicated feed. That's just my own personal choice. When the chicks arrive here, are they vaccinated? No, because I don't want people to feel, if they, if they're, and here's, the, here's another thing to elaborate on that. If, if the chick has been vaccinated and they are fed medicated feed, that vaccine becomes obsolete. So you have to continue to feed medicated feed. So. Yes. There's so many options too when you get your, um, when you place your order for chickens. Do you want their beaks trimmed? Do you want this, that? I don't see the point of trimming a beak. Let the chicken be as natural as possible, right? Um, if you are going to keep your birds penned in a run area that's large enough for them and you have concerns about them getting out because they will get out, mm -hmm. you can clip their wings. Pick up your bird, grab a pair of scissors, pull their wing out, snip their feathers. It does not hurt them whatsoever. And don't do the other side. It, keeps, it makes them lopsided. So they won't they won't fly out. They will grow back, but <laughs> they will be lopsided and can't fly out of your so your run funny. anymore. Um, there is also obviously risk when you do what we do. For for three years we had zero problems with our chickens free ranging, and then all of a sudden this past summer, I, I'm a little obsessed with my my continuous birds, all my egg layers, they have names. They, I know which coop, I have two coops because I have two roosters, so they have to be separated. They know to come home at night, I count them. So I know how many of what breed I have of each and I count them. And I started missing birds and it was constant. And I think I mentioned earlier, the majority of our property is forested. So I was like, what is getting the birds? I couldn't figure it out. I've had stray cats. <laughs> have babies in my carport, so my husband was con convinced it was the cats that were getting the birds, which it was not. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, it took about three weeks and I was losing birds daily. A giant coyote came up my driveway from the base of the property and all it took was me going outside and screaming at it. He left, he never came back, I never lost another bird. Oh, wow. But really? you do run that risk because there are predators everywhere who <clears throat> will have Cougars, lynx, bobcat, coyote, you can have weasels decimate your, your, they can get in your coop. Raccoons. Raccoons, fox, I mean, there's a lot. Groundhogs? I don't think. We have groundhogs. I don't, no, we have, mar no, a marmot or a groundhog won't do anything. Okay, okay. You're good there. Um, <laughs> giant rats can cause a problem too. And in seminar in the past couple of years, we have definitely seen a huge amount of rats. Um, welcome to the neighborhood, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, if there's guardian dogs living outside, yes. do you, can you keep them unlocked? Sure. I mean, if you're, if you're comfortable with a livestock guardian dog doing their job, absolutely. Um, I do recommend making sure that they have somewhere, because the chickens, they don't want to sleep outside in the, in the cold, cooler weather. No, like you can, they'll go to sleep, but like you have to worry about locking the door, locking them in kind of thing. If, you if your dog's right there, probably yeah. not. Uh, best practice, maybe. Uh, quite honestly, I mean, my dogs sleep inside, so I, I can't really speak to livestock guardian dogs. But the when we were trying to amalgamate our leghorns and our sexalings with the older birds, because you don't want to put them in together right away because the older birds, they have a pecking order and they will go after the younger birds. So yeah, the best time to combine two different age groups together, like let them see each other. So mine stayed in the chicken tractor outside. They had a grassy area. The other chickens were free range. They came up, they could see them. They got used to them. And then we let them all free range together. 
the, the chickens would go home to their three existing coops, the ones would return to the chicken tractor. But when we started closing up the chicken tractor and trying to convince these birds to go into either one of the coops, they decided that they would roost every night in a tree. <laughs> so it was really difficult to break them of that cycle. I highly recommend if that does happen, do it right away. Don't do what I did. I'm like, ah, it's summer, they'll be fine. They're up a tree, they'll fly down in the morning, no big deal. But after, you know, four or five weeks of that, to convince them that that's not where they sleep, it's very hard. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. So oh my God. a lot of climbing trees and a lot of squawking <laughs> and flapping feathers. And, yeah. So do they so, inherently know to come back home yes, to the free range? Yes. Yes. Really? Every night they come home. So if one is missing, by the time sundown is there, some, they're either hiding somewhere, they're broody. For those of you that don't know what broody means, means your hen is sitting on a clutch of eggs somewhere. Um, and yeah. Oh, yeah, so something could have got them or who knows. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to go a little bit more into broodiness? Not, it, for me, it's only ever happened twice. I had an Americana hen that hatched out eight chicks. I let her do it. At first, I broke her of her broodiness, so she's sitting on a clutch of eggs, and I'm like, I can't deal with baby chickens. What are you talking about? Wrong time of year, or whatever the case is. And I would pick her up off the nest, collect her eggs, because we collect eggs daily, so I found her stash of eggs, I would collect them, and then in the house they would go. And eventually, she was missing. I found her underneath in a nice sandy area of the of the shed that is now the chicken coop. And I'm like, you know what, just let her do it. And then of course I got all paranoid. I have to separate her. I need her to be in a dog crate with these eggs and be the proper mama that she's supposed to be. Not the case. I left her alone. My husband said, just leave her. I'm like, oh God, what am I gonna do? So anyway, I left her alone. Three weeks later, she hatched out eight chicks all healthy, all in the same run with the other hens and the rooster, and they all bonded and became a family. Wow. So there's, it, you don't have to, just because the books tell you separate them doesn't mean you have to do it. Let them live their lives as naturally as they possibly can. Okay, I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. I have two very broody hens, not right now, but yes. in the summer. Yes. And I pulled their eggs every day. Mm -hmm. But if I was to allow them, so I use um, the Rubbermaid wash bins yep. as their nest. We've got like rows and rows and rows. And I pull them out, clean them, scrub them, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. If she was to sit on those eggs mm -hmm. in that box and hatch them, mm -hmm. those babies would not be able to get out of that box Correct. without killing themselves. Correct. Mm -hmm. So this is why when she let her, when, at my house, when she did her, she was on the ground underneath Some the run. Yeah, you left her alone. I left her alone. But if mine do Move not. Move them. If you want her to hatch out your own chickens, because let's face it, everything is going up in dollars and chickens yeah. are going to get expensive. Yeah. So if she's willing to hatch out the chicks, yeah. move them. Put her in, just find four. Uh, we sell some open um, black plastic nesting boxes, or you can use like a Dairyland crate, okay. or one of the ones that you have probably. Just get it lower to the ground okay. where she can go in there. I would try that. Okay. Um, or... Or in that case, maybe you would have to separate her. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to get more into build me a nursery. Underneath, Which would be, yeah. Underneath the shit shelf. Yep, that would be a great idea. Yeah, yeah because, I mean, it is quite fun when you watch them. And it's so cute because, I mean, this mama hen is teaching her chickens how to be, her chicks how to be chickens. And it, it, it really is cool. And then you don't have to worry about heat lamps. So no nothing. heat lamps necessary. Yeah. No, um, I, I, at that point, I do convert everybody that lived on that side of the coop uh, onto starter feed. It's not going to hurt anybody. You don't have to be feeding them layer because the chicks can't eat layer. Right. So put them all on starter. It's just a higher protein. It's no big deal. Okay. And, um, and then, yeah, hatch them out, have fun, watch them. Okay. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had this past right when it was still, we should have had fall. It was summer and then it, it went cold right away. Mm -hmm. I had a missing, one of my missing hens, I thought the coyote got, well, it turned out, she was broody in a forested area <coughs> out front. And I found her and I collected her up and I'm like, okay, well, she's been gone for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I collected all these eggs. I put her in the house in a dog crate and gave her a straw bed and she sat there and sat there and I'm like, okay, it's like way overdue. I know nothing about candling eggs to be able to tell 
and enough to know if they were fertilized or not. So Shelly that works here, she is an, she is an expert chicken lady. She um, sort of showed me and guided me through what to do and I couldn't see the veins and it was way past due. I mean, she was sitting on a bunch of duds, but she's definitely broody and I think she's gone broody twice and she's not even a year old yet. Wow. So it does happen. Um, yeah. Yeah, if it happens this spring, I'll definitely, because they're, they're both in with roosters now, so I'll definitely let them sit on their eggs, but yeah. yeah. But do you run that risk? You could wind up with roosters. Yeah. I was lucky the time that the chicken did it, I got seven girls and one boy. Well, yes, very lucky. Very, very lucky. <laughs> and you separate your, your roosters because they scrap with each other? That is the reason they're in two separate coops, yes. Yeah. yeah. See, I've got two roosters and they like each other. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. The two roosters that I originally had have both since passed away, um, but one of them is one of her babies. Yes, yeah. and and then the other one is um, the barred rock. That right. If you follow me on Facebook, yeah. I lived in my house for three months. Yeah. Anyhow, he's not nice anymore. Um, <laughs> he needs to go and scoop off. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, another thing, when you have an egg layer of flock, so this is by the time that they are full grown, laying eggs, actually before I get to that point, the first thing, first time you see an egg from your new chickens is the time you convert all of them to layer pellet or layer crumble or layer mash, whichever one you're gonna choose to feed. They're all ready to go on that. I always, what I have in my chicken coops, sort of low to the ground so they can just stand on the ground and peck at it. I use these really inexpensive mineral feeders. I put grit number two in here. Grit is what helps the chickens digest their food. And in here I put oyster shell. Oyster shell, oyster shell is a calcium supplement. You can buy oyster shell in this size bag, in a 25 kilogram size bag, or you can save your eggshells what we do is we save the eggshells. I put them on parchment paper on a cookie sheet, put them in the oven at like 200 degrees. I've already crumbled them up and then stick them in a Ziploc bag. But unfortunately, they eat them so quickly, I can't keep up with that. So it was for shell it is. And that lives in the coop all the time? All the time, because it's free choice. So if they know that they need grit or they know that, that animals are smart like that, they know if they need a mineral or if they need something. So have that. The other thing, chickens you will find are always dusting themselves in dirt um, that's how they clean themselves so you can get this is called a dust bath if you have a dusty area that's all they need or if you have leftover peat moss from your gardening put peat moss down they'll go and bathe in peat moss um, that another thing in your chicken coops you're going to want to put a layer of shavings down wood chips, shavings. Um, I do recommend either using something like this, which is called Fresh Coop, or there's another product called Stall Dry. A lot of people use it in their horse barns. It absorbs moisture, so because my coops are, the floors are wood, I sprinkle it down and then put the shavings on top. They scratch things in anyhow, but it does keep it cleaner and fresher longer. Uh, you don't have to quite clean as often as, um, you would if you don't because you do get quite the ammonia smell if you're not cleaning it regularly. Some people swear by the deep mulch method in the winter where you start off with a layer of shavings like this and rather than go in there and scooping it out every week or two, you're just adding fresh shavings on top and then the poop is composting in there. So there's all different options when it comes, just do what works best for you. The school of YouTube will teach you so many things. Can we go back to the grit? Oh, yeah. Grit. So grit is like a like um, like a small rock, uh, ground up rock. Um, that's how they can process their food because they 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 don't have teeth. So if you don't have like kind of pebbles around. Exactly. Like exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty it's pretty small. Um, I mean, it's definitely thicker than sand, um, but definitely like crushed rock. Yeah. yeah, and when I watch the quail in the morning, they come out and they're always on the on the driveway eating all the little pebbles. Yes, there you go, exactly. Like every morning they come and they eat all yeah. on the Yeah, because driveway. if you don't give them access to grit or they don't have access to grit on your property, what can happen is they can get a buildup, and I believe that's what's called sauerkraut, 
where they're not processing that food and it can kill your chickens. So it's really important to be able to give them teeth, in essence. Yeah. Hi. A uh, question. Do they need grit right from the time that they're chicks? Or um, I don't give it to them when they're baby chicks, but as soon as they're fully feathered and out there, yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? What about the meat birds? Would they need it? Um, I did give it to my meat birds last year. Uh, I don't see why not. I mean, they're, they're going to be the same way. Yeah. The um, egg layers live for years, you said. Yes. Uh, you keep them warm throughout the winter. And, yes. I mean, it's Good been question. getting crazy cold. What do you do with that? Yeah. So as long as their coop is draft free, so my husband actually insulated the walls. Okay. Um, draft free, we do have, um, a, we used to use heated waterers. They get really messy, really hard to change the water you got to flip it upside down and back and forth so what we did this year is we bought a heated base um, that's good for galvanized waterers or plastic waterers you just plug it in um, you can use a heat lamp myself personally I don't like heat lamps because they're a fire hazard uh, we also do sell um, like heated mats kind of like what you could get for like a dog or, or a cat outside that they can lie on um, we used to use, we had one of those old sort of oil heaters. We, in the past couple of years, have plugged those into our coop. Chickens can handle cold, like 10, 15 degrees. Like right now, tonight, when it gets to minus 18, they're not getting any supplementary heat. Oh. They just have the heated waterer plugged in so the water doesn't freeze. They're fine. You know, they, as long as it's draft free, they'll be totally fine. They're a lot more hardy than you would believe them to be for being like, you know, three pounds, right? So their feathers will keep them warm. And I think a part of that layering in the winter of yes. the sawdust is what keeps Yes, so when you do do that deep mulch method, that also creates heat. When you feed suet, you know, it gives them more protein, so. Did you have chickens that had frostbite and stuff this year? Yes. I did too. Yes, so if you look at pictures of Murdoch, <laughs> he actually lost, he used to have these awesome he's a barred rock rooster anyways he used to have this awesome comb yeah. and then he got frostbite a couple years ago now it's just this flat <laughs> whatever but so to prevent frostbite what well, only thing that i have ever found that actually kind of works is before that cold snap comes and if you can get your bird put vaseline on their comb and it will prevent frostbite i wish i would have done that yeah I had a couple of hens, like the leghorns, they kind of have that floppy one and, and they have a little bit. What happens is it will turn black and it will fall off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else for winter? Um, Do they leave it on all the time? In, in winter, okay, so a lot of people say, oh, it's winter, it's too cold, I'm going to leave them inside the coop. No, open the door, let them out. My chickens have gone out every single day since the snow came. They make paths, they'll go, you know, in a covered area, they'll go up on their perch outside. They still like to be able to go out. They don't free range the property, like the gates are open for them, but they stay really close to home. Um, it's too slippery for them too, it's, it's, it's actually quite humorous because they do slide on the ice. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Any other winter questions? How often are you cleaning the water? The water? Um, they are drinking a lot more water, um, I found, over winter, and that is probably because they would find water sources on the property in the summer, so we didn't have to fill them that often. Um, every few days, yeah, and we used to use a waterer like this. Um, it's got a cap here and a nice deep base, and then you could put that heated pad underneath, or sorry, the heated um, de-icer underneath, and then you fill it. <coughs> You just unscrew the top, take it to your, your sink or your hose or whatever, and, and fill it with water there. Keep that cap on to go into the coop, and then you take the cap off. And don't make that mistake. And um, it was good, but what I found, and we have well water, so sometimes we have extra minerals in our water than a lot of people have in the city. So ours would get sort of like a greenish algae on the inside. I mean, sure, you can clean it. But we have since switched to this galvanized one, and I have found it that much better. 
Um, no sunlight, right? Mm -hmm. No yeah. sunlight on the water. Yeah. So, so this water. one, it just opens. You put your water in there, and then slides back on, and it locks into place, and the water comes into the dish as they need it. There's other options for water too. A lot of people like just white plastic buckets and they like what's called the drinking cup. We sell a ton of these, so these are working. Um, if you're handy, I'm not so handy, I'm just, it's easy just to buy a water. But you can put these cups around about maybe four or six depending on the size of your bucket along the bottom and then they just uh, tap their beak on the yellow piece and they uh, get the water in the cup, which also is nice because then you don't wind up with chicken poop in the water because that happens all the time. Um, this is another option that would be clean. So I've not tried the ones with the poultry nipples, but really I guess you would pr probably start training your birds to this when they're young. Um, they just tap on this metal piece and the water comes out. So there's no mess. It's not going to get poopy whatsoever. Um, a lot of people use those. And then as they get older, you've got that feeder that I showed you when they're chicks. We tend to use galvanized feeders like this. Um, there's actually some flat ones that um, you could bolt to the wall that we actually have converted. This can raise up so it can be all different levels for how much. And you just pour the feed in the top, you can hang it. Some people ought to have it on the ground. There's always been sort of, some people say only feed your birds outside. Some people say, it doesn't matter. Me personally, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I have my feeders in, and the water in their, in their coop. Um, some people say, well, that's going to attract rodents. Well, there's rodents inside and outside all the time, right? So They eat the rodents. They do. Anyways. They do eat the rodents. <laughs> and so I, keep, I, I don't want to keep my feet outside because I don't want to attract anything outside. It's going to be more difficult for the rat to get into my coop. And I'm not going to get my feet all wet if it's outside and we have some crazy downpour or whatever the case is. So that's what I do. And, and you know what? They eat a lot during the winter. I'm talking egg layers right now. Um, and in the summer, we don't go near through nearly the amount of food because we let our birds free range. If you do let your birds free range and you have berry bushes, I highly recommend putting something around them. I have finally established my Hascap plants and they ate all the berries. No. Uh, so, whatever. But there's, you know, there's good and bad. But you said earlier you let them in your garden, though. I do let them in the garden. You know what's funny? Just not around I, the berry bushes. That's the berry bushes. That's what they want. And I mean, this past year, my husband was gonna fence in the garden, and we didn't end up doing it. Um, and the chickens were in there all the time, and they really didn't eat anything. The only thing they actually dug up and ate was right after the beet green started to come up, they pulled the beets out. But other than that, they left everything. A couple pecks on the strawberries and, and stuff like that, but yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. They're good for your garden because they aerate the soil and they yeah. fertilize it. Absolutely. Yeah. And they eat the bugs. And they eat the bugs. Yeah. 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 Okay, anybody else have any questions? We're already at 3 o'clock. Wow, go on. <laughs> So I did print out, if you guys want a copy, this is just something I got off the Rochester Hatchery website, just preparing for your chicks. You guys want to pass those around? <laughs> and if anybody wants any information on Chatterbox, this is the non-GMO line. It is good for chickens, turkeys, ducks. If you guys want, I'll just pass them around. This is awesome. Thanks. Good. Are there any um, other YouTube channels or Instagram that you follow? Yes. That you get a lot of resources from? Yes. So I am, I'm always on YouTube and I'm always watching farming videos. So I follow Justin Rose a lot. Uh, Justin Rose has like a million subscribers. He knows what he's talking about. He's a homesteader. So the land. Um, oh, there's so many. Um, the seasonal homestead. That one too, you can get a lot of canning um, and recipes from. Um, or you guys can all just uh, follow me on Facebook and I'll send you all links. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find me on Facebook, it's Avery's Acres. Yeah. You'll have to, that's my personal Facebook page, so you have to add a friend and I'll just accept your friend request because I don't have like a, a group. 
A-B-E-R-Y apostrophe S acres. Yesterday, I actually phoned Rochester Hatchery, where we get our birds from. Um, so there are a few options. I'm obviously talking about Buckerfields because this is the store that I run. Um, but I do know that there are other hatcheries here in the Okanagan that do different breeds. I just don't have a clue um, what their schedule is like. I think one's called... Uh, Brian, do you know North... North True North, 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 North Hatchery. Yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know um, what they've got or when they're operating. Rochester Hatchery is going to mail out the catalogs to Buckerfields next week. Um, they actually just got new owners, so we're going to see how the year goes, but I've been told that they've bought two hatcheries. One, uh, the other one is Miller out of Saskatchewan. So we get our birds from Rochester. How it works is um, for customer orders, I think you can start ordering towards the end of February. Um, come here to the store, or you can order online. Yeah. When you go to checkout, choose Buckerfield Salmon Arm, and what happens is you don't pay online, you pay when you pick them up here. So the money goes to Rochester Hatchery. Uh, it's not like, uh, I mean, we, we get like a shipping fee or something like that, which you would have to pay either way. Mm -hmm. So I have to go to the post office delivery. Typically last <coughs> year was every Friday, so every Friday morning at seven, I'm at the post office picking up the birds. They are hatched boxed and transported. No food, no water. The first time they get that is when they get here and I dip their beaks. Um, that's for the loose birds. The ones that you guys would order, minimum 25, they're going to come in the box. So that's why we ask you to pick them up at 8 o'clock in the morning that day, make arrangements with the babysitter or work or whatever you have to do because they're stuck in a box and they've been in that box since they were born. Aww. So, I know everybody says aw, but they <laughs> survive for up to 48 hours off of the yolk from when they hatched. Yeah. That's all they need. So, yeah. I just have a question. Um, like, we're getting our chicks on Valentine's Day. Okay. Um, and they're coming That's a good from, present. Yeah, <laughs> I did, um, we have a bit of a drive, like, okay. to get them home. So, what would you recommend, like, getting them home? How like old are they going to be? New, like new, new. Okay, so they're going to probably come in a poultry box. Okay. So as long as your vehicle is nice and warm, how long of a drive? A couple of hours. Okay, that should be fine because, like I said, for these ones, they're good for 48 hours, really. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's maximum because basically for us, it's like a 24-hour period. But if it's only a few hours, you'll be fine. Okay. Just once you get home, always make sure you have their housing prepared ahead of time. Yeah, it's all ready now. Perfect. Like and, ready then, now. and then you want to want to turn your heat lamp on or your heat plate on, whatever you're using, and have it have it ready to go. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and then dip their beaks and you're good to go. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. You mentioned at the beginning that you bought chicks that are ready or chickens that are ready to lay eggs the first year. You I bought those. Them older too? You can buy them older. If you're on Facebook, like Okanagan Poultry Forum, there's a ton of different sort of shoe swap and Okanagan groups that you can join on Facebook. Um, a lot of people are just selling birds. Um, sometimes Shelly that works here, she's my receiver upstairs and she, she raises a ton of different varieties of birds. I'm not sure if she's selling them or not, but uh, it's always worth an ask. Uh, there's a lot of people that, that do that. Um, and you can sometimes get ready to lay hens from a hatchery. We don't bring them in here because I can't transport a ready to lay hen, but perhaps True North Hatchery does in the Okanagan. They don't do egg layers anymore, only meat birds. Only meat birds. Only meat birds. She went out of it last year because she can't get help. Wow. And Emily's older. She's well, and the out. other thing yeah. too is everybody was so wound up with this avian flu yeah. thing that yeah. they weren't doing birds and. Yeah. No. She, I got the last batch, like the yeah. last the last of them yeah that you know what for us we were lucky um avian flu take it or leave it do your own research but for for us um it never stopped um the birds from coming from alberta we were totally fine there was no halt in production or anything for us so that was really good um you had a question back there yeah any experience with other other types of birds like ducks or i know don't However, I do have staff that do. So if you have specific duck or quail questions, Shelly raises both. Uh, she works Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Starts at 9 in the morning, so you're welcome to give her a call or stop in. Also, Paige works here. 
and she has has ducks and geese as well and um, I'm not sure about quail uh, and she works a couple days a week but there's always somebody here and at any point you are more than welcome to call here I will help you on the phone if you want to email me my business cards are I didn't bring any up here my business cards are all downstairs you can shoot me an email I can point you in the right direction of who to talk to people come to Buckerfields they've been coming here for 104 years you know they come to Buckerfields for advice and for information and we're always happy to give it yeah so two questions do you guys bring in the ducks as well like can you order ducks into Buckerfields as well no the only thing you can order so we just strictly stick to Rochester just because it's simple but you can we have and can order pheasants a lot of people do pheasants for meat um, I'm just this is a 2020 catalog so there are Orlop bronze turkeys white turkeys uh, Chinese ringneck pheasants, pheasants are the one. You guys are welcome to look through this. The birds are pretty much the same as what's going to come in this year's catalog, or go on to RochesterHatchery.ca. You'll see what's what's available, um, and all the different breeds. It actually it gives you a blurb about each of them, like if they lay a blue egg, if they're you know a heritage breed, what to expect, what their sort of personality is like. Um, tons of info like that. Uh, yeah, so. Shelly and Paige are the experts for the other birds. I can talk turkeys and chickens all day long, but yeah. And the other thing too, if you are gonna go with meat birds and you're trying to decide between, did I mention about processing? No. No. I should mention about processing. Okay, so if you are like me, I personally, although I've watched plenty of videos on how to process a bird, I have no intention or desire to do so myself. Not only that, but I cannot sell my meat if I, if I process them myself. If you are wanting to process your own meat for your own self, hats off to you. Good, good for you, and I mean, I do need to learn how to do this one day, um, so I do want to do that. I think Bonnie, I think we were talking about going with Larissa one day and learning how to do that. <laughs> But anyways, um, processing yeah. your meat birds. There are a couple of um, local poultry abattoirs. I'm not, well, I can't remember the one that's, everybody, everybody uses this one in a sort of, um, is it the one in Pritchard? No, Pritchard is who I'm gonna talk about. Oh, okay. So I take all of my birds, my meat birds and my turkeys to Tanya at Spring Valley Ranch. Okay. She is in Pritchard, it is well worth the drive. Her place is impeccable. She is a lovely human being and I would eat off the floor, that's how clean it is there. So I really feel very strongly about that. She raises her animals organically too. So, uh, I mean, it's so funny, like I would go there and drop off my birds and we can, we can sit there and chat for like two hours about, about chickens, it's crazy. <laughs> but it's, it's, and oh, another good thing about her is if you are going to um, raise enough meat for yourselves and you want to sell some, she actually will put your farm label, it's a little bit extra money, 50 cents a bird or something like that. She'll make up an actual tag with the weight of the bird, what you're gonna charge for the bird, your farm name on the sticker, like totally professional, like if you go to the butcher shop and, and you get your, your steak with everything stamped on it, right? So that's, to me, bar none, she is top notch. I would totally go there. Hendrickson Homestead, they started a year ago. They are White Lake. They too process turkeys and chickens. So you could take them there to get them processed. And you don't have to take them to an abattoir like this to get processed only if you're gonna sell them. If you don't wanna butcher them yourself, take them there. You know, uh, yes you have to pay, yes you need to pre-book. So if you are intending on getting meat birds, I've already booked mine in and paid my deposit. I'm doing 300 chickens this year and 50 turkeys. And the reason I'm doing this is because we've sort of, I, this is my side hustle, right? So we have started, um, we grow enough food for us and then to sell some to basically replenish some of the costs of, of farming because let's face it, this is not cheap. And the other reason that we do this is we like to feed the community items that were grown locally, were treated humanely, had a good life, were free range, um, in addition to um, the chickens and turkeys we raise, we also do pork. 
So I have a lot of freezers. So it's really expensive. And I will add, Tommy's <laughs> chickens are amazing so tasting. Yeah. So if Thank you guys you. need chickens, order them from her. They're, Actually, they're since unreal. you said that, the first year we did meat birds was not this past year, but it was the year before. And I let them go for eight and a half weeks. And I got these big meaty birds and it was awesome. They were about six, six, probably six pound average, which is a great size. I mean, nice. bigger than what you get at the grocery store. Yeah. And then this past year, I'm like, okay, well, I, I'll cut back on the time a little bit. I'll do it at seven and a half weeks because it's recommended six to eight. My birds were not that big this past year. So this year I've timed it at eight weeks even, so I'm hoping to get right in the middle. So count your weeks. When you buy your broilers or your meat birds, count your weeks. Then book your appointment, whether it be Hendrickson Homestead, Spring Valley Ranch, or the one, I cannot remember the name. Anyway, there's one out in Armstrong area. Lucky C? No, Lucky C is not, um, they're not government inspected. Right, right. So but they will process. So if you're just doing it for yourself and you don't want to do the butchering yourself, Lucky Sea Acres, they're on Facebook. Um, they do that there. Um, yeah, it'll come to me. Anyways, so processing is huge, especially um, when you can take them somewhere where somebody actually cares and this place is government inspected so when it means when it's government inspected every single time they butcher some representative is there so it's not just like a random pop in they're always there for every butcher um, and that's and i've had it happen where they say um nope that one it does you, you can't have that one back it, it it doesn't count i can't remember the term anyways um because it was too small because once in a while you'll get birds that just don't grow like the other ones. Mm -hmm. I thought, I had one that had a bad leg and I thought they were going to say no to that, but it was totally fine. Um, and, and she also gives you the option. So if you are butchering with Spring Valley Ranch, you can keep the legs, the hearts, mm -hmm. the livers, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And I do this with my turkeys and with my chickens because I feed them to my dogs. I chop up the livers or the hearts for the cats. They absolutely mm -hmm. love them. So we use all parts of the bird and, and yeah. The feet make great bone broth. You, they, bone broth, totally, yes. Yeah. And, um, and, and you get, if you're looking for a source of collagen, there's a lot of supplements on the market. Mm -hmm. Collagen, you will get in the feet. Turkey, yeah. turkey legs and chicken legs, like the, like the actual feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super good. And yeah, oh, if you have a lot of birds, because you need to transport them correctly. You can't just throw them in the back of your car and take them, <laughs> take them to the processor. So we are going to be selling some because I have somebody that's already asked me for them. They're poultry crates. They're actually meant to transport, they're transport crates. But over the past two years, we rent them here. So we only charge $10 per crate. Um, you can have it like, on the Monday, as long as it's returned by Wednesday, otherwise it's ten dollars a day every day you're late. So, really inexpensive way to do it. You can rent them from Buckerfields, and yeah, you do. So basically, how we do it because we have done rentals in the past. You pay the crate price when you come back. You get refunded everything but your ten bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Easy. yeah, super simple. Any other questions? Oh good. Yeah. Super. Really good. Oh good. Thank yeah. you. Really informative. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. Oh, and uh, if you don't know, Melanie has been advertising full this night of the year for the Shushua Food Action Society. Yeah. Um, we all have teams, so if you want to join, let us know. Yeah. Yeah.